you guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2024 Mazda CX-90 Plug-In Hybrid Premium. And a big thanks to Ben at Furman Mazda in Brandon, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car or SUV in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Ben. And as most of you guys probably know by now, the CX-90 is Mazda's all new flagship three row SUV released this year for the 2024 model year. Designed to compete with more premium three-row SUVs such as the Acura MDX, Cadillac XD6, Infiniti QX60, Lincoln Aviator, or even the BMW X7, while being priced way closer to SUVs like the Toyota Highlander, Honda Pilot, even the Ford Explorer. Available in three different power plants, we've already reviewed both of the non-plug-in trims. Both feature a 3.3-liter turbo inline six-cylinder, made it to a 48-volt-mild hybrid system, cranking out 280 horsepower, 332 pound-feet of torque for the base, 340 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque for the Turbo S models. Here we have the plug-in hybrid, which cranks out a pretty healthy 323 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque, with an available 26 miles of pure electric range, 490 miles of total range, including the gas motor. The gas motor is a 2.5 liter turbo four cylinder, which has made it to a 68 kilowatt hour electric motor. There are three trims for the plug-in hybrid, starting with preferred with a base price of 47,445 bucks. Still coming pretty well loaded with the power moonroof, 12 speaker Bose system, and the 12.3 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's the only time it's an actual touchscreen. Otherwise, you gotta go through the dial. The premium that we have here is a base price a tick under 53K. Here we get 21 inch rims, captain chairs, hands-free lift gate, memory seats, front and rear parking sensors, and a 1500 watt AC outlet. The top trim is a premium plus, the base price a tick under 57K. Here we get everything from the premium plus vented seats, Napa leather, plus other goodies. But as we mentioned, here we have the premium trim with the base price a tick under 53,000 bucks. What else we get for that money? Let's jump right in so up front we mentioned the bold new styling this is an all new ground up vehicle we have led headlamps the high and low beam functional airflow in the corners full front parking sensors we don't get a 360 we don't get a front facing camera for the premium got to go for the premium plus to get those features but this white metallic paint color is beautiful hopefully you'll pick it up for you guys really shining in this florida sun the mazda badge up front houses your radar cruise control i'm really liking the black themed a little bit of shiny chrome right outside. I wish there was a sport trim where you can black out the shiny chrome. I'm sure they'll add that in the future years, but for now still looks really clean up front. A little bit of chrome down below as well. Radiator up top with the intercooler down below. The wheel and tire setup, as you mentioned, this premium gets these 21 inch rims, the black and silver contrast, and we have some beefy Falcon Zeke's CT60A all season tires. It mentions being 275-45R21. And I'm really liking the design with the pretty beefy brake caliper up front. A little bit of plastic cladding surrounding the wheel well area. The plastic cladding continues out towards the side rocker panel area. A little bit of chrome down below that says Mazda underneath the rear door. Hopefully you can pick it up for you guys on camera. We get smart access for the driver and the front passenger. LED turn signal on the mirror, their body color mirror with a black contrast. We get blind spot monitoring on the glass. Not quite sure if I can pick it up for you guys on camera. It's kind of hidden away, but once there's a vehicle in your blind spot, it does light up pretty bright. We get a little bit of shiny chrome up top too with an aluminum roof rail. Kind of wish all the chrome in this SUV was the same material as this roof rail as you see. Not reflective, whereas this trim down below, very reflective. They should have just used that trim all throughout here where it looked a little bit more premium. But the bottom portion is blacked out, blacked out B and C pillars. We can check out this window sticker real quick for this 2024 Mazda CX-90. Hopefully you guys can pick it up on camera with the rhodium white metallic exterior and the grayish interior. Standard equipment, you guys can pause, take a look at all of these standard rain sensing wipers, ton of other really useful features such as the active driving display, wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless phone charger, ton of wireless stuff. Options for the premium package, you can pause, take a look at everything we have here. I already mentioned most of them in the beginning. Power panoramic moonroof, active driving display, Bose, navigation, wireless phone charger, as we mentioned, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. 53,495 for the base price after a 1375 destination and handling fee. Total price sitting at tick under 55,000 bucks. So we are getting up there in price, but this is a pretty well loaded vehicle as you'll see throughout this review. The gas cap is not pushed open. I'll show you the latch is inside. Same rear wheel and tire setup. The only difference is a smaller brake caliper. We don't have a side sensor for the rear parking sensing either. Subtle rear spoiler with a black trim beneath that. 
LED taillights. They kind of remind me of the new taillights for the CX-5s, but they're still unique in their own regard here for the CX-90. CX-90 badge, all-wheel drive underneath that. Shout out Furman Mazda and Brandon Florida for helping make this review possible. I guess they ran out of license plate brackets. East Sky Active plug-in hybrid badge in the corner. As we mentioned, full LEDs for the taillights, including the reverse lights. We can check out the exhaust tip down below. We'll see if we can rev up this plug-in hybrid system, and I'll catch back with you in one second. All right, guys, that was the sound of the 2.5 liter turbo four cylinder made it to the 68 kilowatt hour electric motor, cranking out a combined 323 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque, enough to get this 4,900 pound three row SUV to 60 in about six and a half seconds. So, very respectable acceleration times. And as we mentioned, the fuel economy is also really impressive. We didn't mention 25 mpgs combined with just the gas motor, 56 mpge. I also like how Mazda put the washer fluid outside of this engine bay, so if you spill it, it's not going to go all over the place, but what you see is basically what we get. Hydraulic struts are also appreciated. We can shut this hood right down, take a step back, walk around this 2024 CX-90 plug-in hybrid one more time. Not quite sure what they got going on over there, but we're about to step inside, get away from all the noise. As we mentioned, smart access for the driver and the front passenger, taking a step inside. We get soft touch materials up top wood trim in the center, genuine aluminum beneath that, gushy soft faux leather with uh, genuine leather, gushy soft armrest. Hopefully pick it up just how soft it really is. We get four window auto one touch, four way adjustable mirrors lock and unlock and an aluminum door handle. Down below it's just hard plastic. We get a ton of storage. You'll fit a foot long easily, but then you'll have no space for a drink. You'll fit a 30 ounce water bottle in a six inch sandwich right next to it. Taking a step inside is the grayish interior, the black stripe in the center. It's perforated in the center, but they're not ventilated seats. They are heated though, but to get ventilated seats, you got to go to the top preferred or premium plus trim. They're fully adjustable though. You have lumbar control. You can recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats. Taking a step inside, we can really check it out. So foot on the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. Well, first thing you notice is the steering wheel. It's a pretty thick wheel, typical Mazda design with a solid tendon to bolster a notch. 9.3 feels perfect in your hands, and the material itself, very nice quality leather. The center portion is hard plastic with good graining material. The horn itself, loud and aggressive. People should definitely be getting out of your way. We'll do a window check, see if we get dual panes. We do get dual panes. We had dual panes in the Turbo S. We did not have dual panes on the regular Turbo model. The steering wheel controls, you have volume and skip, source, AM, FM, Sirius. You can hang up and answer your phone calls, voice commands, and your information. On the right side, radar cruise control, which you can adjust. You get paddle shifters, controlling the eight-speed automatic transmission, which is also all new in Mazda's lineup. The stocks have a satisfying click to them. We have auto headlamps, auto high beams, and auto rain sensing wipers. To the left of the steering wheel, we have a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. It's not a power tilt. To the left of it, we have our gas cap release, trash control you can disable. You can disable your parking sensors and disable your 360 sense. The tailgate release, two person memory seats, as we mentioned. There's this grayish material or color outside of your air vents and some stitching in the center stack. The dashboard is soft touch material. We have a heads up display too. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. Nice. And a 12.3 inch display slash touchscreen. If you're an Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it operates as a touchscreen. Otherwise, you got to go through the dial. But here we have information, entertainment, navigation. We'll see if the SD card is currently hooked up. It's not. Mazda will give it to you if it's part of a package. Otherwise, you can go on Amazon or eBay and get this SD card for about 50 to 60 bucks, whereas Mazda charges you closer to four five hundred. The overall settings, you guys can take a look. EV settings, we can check them out. Charging schedule, climate control timer, AC charging, connector lock, regenerative braking level, EV priority, and driving charge ticket. Interesting. My personal favorite to look at at all times would be the navigation screen, but we can't look at it because it's not set up, so we'll just leave it here. Beneath that, more of that soft material with that grayish trim in the center, aluminum above the air vents, dual zone automatic climate control, and we get automatic climate control out rear. 
We have heated seats, no ventilated seats. Got to go to the top premium plus trim to get the ventilated seats. I like how we have hard buttons for all the climate control. A lot of manufacturers are going for a full digital layout, but I like how Mazda sticking to buttons makes it 10 times easier to use. I like how we have this gushy soft leather trim for my knees off and hitting. We have some aluminum above that. My drive modes, the drive modes include sport, normal, EV, and off-road. We'll start the review off in normal transition to sport and possibly EV if we have enough range and see what the differences are. The gear selector controls the eight speed automatic transmission as you mentioned. Backup camera, it doesn't take up the whole screen, but we get front parking sensors and rear parking sensors illuminated on the right side. The display itself is excellent. We get guidance lines, but no trajectory. I'm turning the steering wheel and nothing's happening. Not expected for a vehicle in this price point. Anyway, we can throw it back into park and it should return to the home screen. It does. Behind that, we have the dial which controls the 12.3 inch screen. Electron park and brake, auto hold, and a perfect location for the volume and skip control. Favorites right outside. I like this wood trim too. We can check out these two cup holders. You'll fit 24 ounce bottles with no problem. And a pass through perfect for a phone. Wireless charging pad and a 12 volt right beneath. I kind of wish we had more USB A, USB C ports all throughout the center stack. But as we open up this glove box, you'll see two USB C ports, an LED light. Not the most depth, but you'll be able to lie down five, maybe six, 12 ounce cans. The material itself is gushy soft with more of that grayish contrast stitching. The glove box has an aluminum latch. We can pull it. It is damped and lined with felt. Massive too. You'll stack 30, 35, 40 license plates. You'll fit two, maybe three pairs of shoes in here. Absolutely massive. And it's lined in felt. The rear view mirror is frameless, auto dimming with three garage home link settings on it. We get a panoramic moonroof. We can open up the shade, it opens up pretty quickly. And interior lights are LED. Great, the sunglass holder too. Large and lined with felt, we can open up the actual glass. The actual glass doesn't open really far, if I remember correctly. Yeah, not the farthest, Let's see if it goes any further. It does not, but still pretty close to the end of the front row. We'll poke our way out of here. It's a hot one today in Tampa, Florida, sunny and 83 degrees. Not the hottest day, but we are expecting some rain, so very humid. We can shut this moonroof right up. We'll leave the shade open, so when we hop out back, you see how much light is brought into the cabin. But that's about it for the front seat of this 2024 Mazda CX-90 Premium. It is a really nice interior. We are getting up there in price, but remember, this is a plug-in hybrid high powered plug-in hybrid with high levels of luxury. We'll lift these seats up so we can actually fit back here. It doesn't fit because of the front seats. I'll catch right back with you. All right, we got to figure it out. Up top, we have some soft touch materials with gushy soft leather in the center. Gushy soft armrest too. It is really well padded. One of the most padded armrests in the business. Wood trim in the center, aluminum beneath that, aluminum door handle, and more of that stitching around the grab handle. Additional Bose speaker, one of your 12, and a ton of storage for the back seat. You'll fit two big gulps in there with a six inch sub, possibly stack up vertically a foot long. Taking a step inside, no nameplate, but I like this plastic foot plate. It'll help us tremendously getting out into third row, which we'll check out in a minute. But these rear seats are decently bolstered for a back seat, perforated in the center. They're not heated or ventilated. You gotta go up to the top trim to get the heated seats out rear, but they're still fully adjustable. You can recline them and you can slide them back and forth. Taking a step inside, I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings, and I still have at least six, seven inches of knee room, headroom. I have at least two, three inches. Ton of space. If you're under six foot six, six foot seven, you'll fit back here with no problem. Ton of light brought in the cabin too, thanks to this pretty large panoramic moonroof. We get automatic rear climate control too. It's just a single zone, so a total of a three zone climate. Two USB-C ports and some air vents right up top. Map box behind both of the front seats. These armrests are pretty soft and padded. Not the widest, but it still fit a full size arm decently easily. The interior lights are LED and we get a hook for both of the back passengers. Arm grab handles, whatever you like to call them. That's about it for the back seat of this 2024 CX-90. Let's check out the third row real quick see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the materials back here so all right taking a seat back here pulling the seat back i have a pretty decent amount of knee room about four five six inches there's not as much back there but as you see still fully accommodable for the back seat passenger the materials back here are all hard plastic we have two cup holders you'll fit 24 ounce bottles with a pass through good for a phone and a usb c port headroom i have about an inch maybe two so if you're under six foot two, you'll fit in the back of the CX-90 
with no problem, which is impressive for what's considered a midsize SUV. We have air vents that blow through the knees of the back passengers as well. Really convenient and some hooks, tie downs for some cargo for the trunk. Speaking of cargo for the trunk, let's hop out of here, take a step out into the cargo space, see how much space is offered back there, and then take this 2024 CX-90 plug-in hybrid out for a drive. So pressing the button out rear, we have the hands-free tailgate, but I don't have the remote in my pocket right now, so it's not gonna work. But as you see, pretty decent amount of space, even with the third row up, these floor mats are kind of protruding your visibility. Underneath these floor mats, we have not as much space because of the plug-in hybrid system, but you still have your fix-a-flat kit and you probably fit a backpack in that corner. So let's drop these third row seats. You pull this latch, push the seat forward. Same thing on the opposite side. And now, as you see, pretty competitive with the rest of the mid-size segment, maybe a little bit more spacious, about the same as a Telluride Palisade. But the styling here, performance is miles ahead. You drop those second row seats down, I'd expect you to fit an 80, 85 inch to be back here with no problem. Ton of cargo space for a mid-size SUV. As you mentioned, we have a ton of charging back here too, 12 volt AC, 500 watt AC adapter located in the left corner. LED lights too. For the cargo space, dropping this tailgate down with a click of a button. You can also press that lock button so when it drops down, it locks all four doors. That's about it though for the inside and outside of this all new 2024 Mazda CX-90 plug-in hybrid premium. It is a beautiful vehicle. Mazda really knocked the styling out of the park. Performance wise, let's take this plug-in hybrid with 323 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2024 Mazda CX-90 plug-in hybrid. Let's take it out for a drive. But first thing I noticed, the steering has a really good weight when you're not moving. And even while you're moving, it feels very sharp and direct. Low speeds, everything feels really tight. We'll see how it is over the bumps. Looks like they got another CX-90 coming in. Looks like a preferred package. I haven't done a base model yet. That would be cool to get my hands on. But this is the premium. Look at that Corvette still wrapped up too. But we'll keep my mind occupied on this CX-90. Steering still feels great. Taking a step out here, make sure we're good. And we'll lean into it about halfway. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, it doesn't feel any slower than the regular turbo model. It doesn't feel quite as snappy as a Turbo S. But really, for the most part, all the CX-90s I reviewed feel just about as quick. I might have to let this lawnmower go. Nope, don't have to. Stepping out here. Feels good, lean into it, ooh. Quick shifts too with this eight-speed transmission. And as soon as you let off, the regen braking does its job, so the brakes feel even better than they felt in the turbo trims. The steering feels nice, sharp, and direct. Come on, man, let me go. Okay, cool. Big bump, see how it handles it. You feel it a little bit, but it absorbs it really well considering these 21 inch rims. Throwing it in quicker than we should. Still in normal mode too. We'll throw it in the sport, see what changes up. Some big bumps in normal mode. Boom. Boom, right, rides over it like it is nothing. Throwing it in a sport. We'll see if we can try out an acceleration off the line, okay. Looks like we got an open road, complete stop, and on the gas. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Yeah, that felt way quicker than the turbo models, at least off the line. This thing just took off. Yeah, so if I saw, if I expected a drag race between this and the turbo models, I would expect this one to come out like half a car, maybe a full car ahead for the zero to 20. Obviously the turbos will catch up. They'll probably catch up before it even hits 60, but that zero to 20 feels noticeably quicker than it did in the regular 3.3 turbos. This 2.5 turbo, it's got some kick. In the Mazda 3, it cranks out what with premium fuel, 250 horsepower, 320 pound-feet of torque, and that's without any hybrid systems either. So for a turbocharged platform, this thing can move. We'll try out these paddles so you can't really activate anything on the steering wheel you just got to put the car into the paddle shift mode we'll try one more off the line make sure we're okay all right on the gas oh my gosh guys Whoa. this thing can move we'll see if we can use pure ev 
No, it doesn't let us use pure EV yet because we only have one mile of available range to we'll let this UPS truck go too. And maybe this tractor, and I'll catch right back with you. All right, the tractor's letting us go. We'll use these paddle shifters real quick, second gear. Throwing it in, good steering on the gas. Oh God, this thing can move. <sighs> this is a tough decision. I don't know which one I would recommend. Obviously the Turbo S models have a better engine note with the inline six cylinder and they have a little bit more top end compared to the plug-in hybrid. Yes, this absolutely launches you like a rocket off the line. But once you cross about 45-ish miles per hour, you start to wish you had those extra two cylinders. But still, that zero to 40 is just about all, I would say 75 to 85% of consumers really need. Sport mode, the steering gets even more direct on center. The body roll, very limited. There's still a little bit of body roll. It's a little bit more than I would expect from a vehicle that is trying to compete with BMW. But considering the X7 has like six sets of support braces compared to this car, zero. <laughs> I'm not surprised that it doesn't feel quite as sharp. But again, you're saving $20,000, more than $20,000, compared to a base BMW X7, which probably has less features that you have here. Over the bumps, it feels absolutely fantastic. Throttle response is great in sport mode. You do lose a gear. Well, you don't lose a gear. It just turns off your overdrive or riding around 2,000 RPM at about 30 miles per hour, as opposed to riding around, I would say, like 1,300, 1,200 RPM but it still feels great. We'll step out into this highway, open her up a little bit more, and we'll see what she's got. All right, guys, taking a step out here, we can open her up a little bit more, get situated on the gas. Oh my God, the torque here is, oh, up top. Okay, we're gonna have to push it a whole lot further. Oh, opening her up a little bit more. This thing can move. I would love to see a drag race between this and a regular turbo highway pull. Guys, this thing can really move at higher speeds. These dual pane windows do a wonderful job isolating us from the road. Hopefully we get a chance to try out a real world turning radius. Should be able to once this F-150 passes. Try another one out in first gear. All right, first gear, super sharp turning radius for a large SUV. Make sure we're in first gear. First gear on the gas. Oh. accidentally upshifted me a little bit early because I pressed the button twice but good lord the performance here is wonderful we don't have to beat it up a whole lot further we can throw it back into normal mode turn off these manual shifts by just pressing and holding and everything turns super quiet the heads-up display get, is nice and bright directly in my face the steering gets a little bit lighter for the most part this is a really quiet luxury SUV really feels like something that you get from a Lexus overall guys if you're looking for a top level luxury SUV but you're not looking to spend 70 80 thousand bucks like you would with the Germans this gives you 90% of everything you get from the Germans when it comes to driving experience it gives you a hundred percent of the features but it only costs about 75 80 percent of the price a BMW x7 a Mercedes-Benz GLS start at over 75,000 bucks, near 80,000 bucks after destination, you put one or two packages on those cars, you're approaching 85, 90,000 dollars. This is a near fully loaded Mazda CX-90 with the base price under 53. Fully loaded, the base price is under 56, or under 57, sorry guys. For that money, you can't beat it. The performance here is, it's matched, but for the price point, it is pretty close to unmatched. I understand the zero to 60 times aren't as impressive as we would expect, knowing the zero to 60 you get from BMW with similar power numbers, but this is still a really quick SUV. Up top, that 3.3 liter turbo is really strong. The eight speed transmission, it's not ZF levels of quick, but it's a huge improvement compared to the old six speed. All right, guys, one more time, we can check out the turning radius and on the gas, oh, it's so strong. Ooh. Yeah, guys, overall, if you're looking for a near top level luxury three row SUV, around the 50 to $55,000 price point, well, 40 to $55,000 price point because the base starts at just 40,000 bucks for the non-plug-in hybrid. I would definitely recommend checking out the 2024 CX-90. If you want the plug-in hybrid, definitely check it out. I would recommend checking out the top premium plus trim 
because it's only an additional 4,000 bucks, but you get every feature that you could possibly want or need. Ventilated seats, and in Florida, that feature just sells vehicles just by itself. But again, if you're looking for a near top level luxury through row SUV, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2024 Mazda CX-90. And a big thanks to Ben at Furman Mazda and Brandon Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to our inventory below, and if you're looking for a new car or SUV in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Ben. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel, and I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope all of you have a great day.